so this is part two on this bus here. If you haven't watched the first one, I'll put a description, uh, the link in the description below. But it just had serious suspension issues as we went through. The It was riding way too high. It, it, the bus had been lengthened and stretched and had major work, but it was never really that drivable. Uh, we had to go through and fix a bunch of issues on it here. So he just had this oil pan gasket on a Series 60 replaced. And... Uh, we said it's leaking from the oil pan gasket, but he just had on, but you can see what they did here. This corner was rolled out. This is where you put the Permatex on the, the seam of the engine block there, but the actual gasket, you can actually see this here. In the, see where it's rolled out here. And that's where it was leaking at. So it was supposed to have you know, the raised ridge and then it was pushed out. And cut. And cut, yeah. Right okay. there. $230 an hour for labor? Is that what I think that's what it is. <laughs> well, they, they flat rate. They, you know, paying gas is this much, just so whatever they charge for doing anything. Got this nice molded gasket for the oil pan on here. And it really snaps down into place really well. That's much better than the other kind of gasket, but this isn't the pan that, that was pulling up for the serial number of the engine, so we had to go back to the Detroit dealer to actually get this gasket. It's got these little molded tabs on it and stuff and it's pre-shaped already. The other one doesn't have this pre-shaped. So this is a much superb gasket. Okay, we have a little bit of Permatex to put on here where there's these little seams uh, in here. So we're gonna put Permatex where the gasket goes there and there and then down on this end of the block. Good adhesion of the Permatex. That's the underside of a Series 60. Ready? Yeah. Oh, it's leaking everywhere. Oh, that's, the, uh, that's water coming out of the air tank? Yeah, it's the hard to drain one. Um, you're missing the drain pan everywhere. <laughs> Pick your battles. change the oil that's the real question that smells horrible yes it's, it's you're fine with that one it's already okay. too late it definitely smells <laughs> Spare hand, you can get underneath that thing. The pan? No, under this. Yeah. 
Clearly the ejector wasn't working in there. see inside of it because of the back light, but no, it looks like grease. <laughs> <laughs> I'm alarmed by how much corrosion I see inside of the... It hasn't been ejecting. Yeah. What is that line over there? It looks like it's cut. Is that a battery cable? What is that? I don't know. Why did it look that way yet? Where am I looking at? I can't. It's up there. Now this air dryer was never plumbed correctly. It's supposed to be a fitting in there uh, that tells it to purge air and it was never wired right, uh, plumbed up right. So we ordered, we went ahead and this is, was missing some parts too. The little bolts on the bottom that hold it in on the bottom weren't there. And because of how rusted and corroded everything is on the inside because it's just had water sitting in it for years, we're gonna go ahead and uh, we just ordered a reman one. We're just gonna swap it out and then get it plumbed in correctly. And then we also are installing pull chain drains here to the air tanks um, that will run to the insides. So you didn't have to bend over to drain these tanks. These tanks used to be very hard to get to to drain the water out of them. Uh, but now we're going to have pull chains where it's easy access and they can actually get drained every day like they're supposed to. Plus with the air dryer working correctly, we're not going to have that problem anymore anyway. So just lots of little inconvenient things on this bus that weren't done right. So here, when they put this air dryer on this bus, they never hooked it up right. So it never once purged the water and, and oil out of it. It's just been self-containing everything. So it wasn't an air dryer at all. It was just an extra storage vessel for water. Um, so we got that all plumbed in right, and now it actually purges air and ejects it like it's supposed to. So we made some new leveling arms, leveling valve arms that we're gonna attach on here. Each side of this bus is different, but we're gonna make it so that the ride height on here is actually set correctly to the airbags. Um, you can see where they never attached things back together down here, just random. They welded things in weird on the one shock when we replaced it, you can never get the shock bolt out. So if the shock bolt needs to be replaced, you're gonna have to get in here with a welder, um, because they, they welded things in the way of the shock bolt. So we took the nut off of it and we could put a new shock on it, but we couldn't pull the shock out because of the way it was in there. So again, we'll have this, this right height set here. Uh, better. I got a bunch of blocking in here. Um, it's a little higher right now than the actual right height is. Uh, we'll get, we're going to get it. We got new leveling arms that we've actually welded together that'll span this distance here correctly. And then we've still got some adjustment on here, but they just had it all the way up. I don't understand why it was aired up so high. Um, what made them think that that was okay to do, especially when the shocks were the limiting factor, you know, nothing else. It, the shocks were holding it down into place. <laughs> So we'll have this, uh, we got the new shocks on it, um, except there's one back around there. We just got to do the tag axle shocks, but we're going to pull the tags to do that. Uh, we got new wheel bearings in the hubs are put on here now. Uh, we replaced a few studs. Uh, we're going to adjust the brakes on here. Um, there's some front geometry questions that we're still working on. I'll go show you that. Okay, so we got out the measuring stuff here and check the wheel alignment. Wheel alignment's good. We check the caster on here and we have seven degrees of caster, positive caster on this side of the axle. And on the other side, we have three and a half degrees. So we're trying to figure out why that is. We're making some measurements on the radius rods and then we noticed then that this radius rod here, this is the adjustable kind. So it's like a tie rod end, you know, where it's threaded opposite directions and you just turn the middle and you can lengthen or shorten to move the axle in and out on the bottom. Same thing on the top. And same thing on the top on the other side. But the radius rod on the other side is solid. It has one adjuster in the back and it's welded solid all the way to the front. So you'd actually have to take it off and spin it to be able to lengthen or shorten it. Um, and then we check the measurements. That one's a half inch different than the one that's over here on this side. Um, so why is that kind on there? Did it get bent and somebody replaced it? Not really sure. And uh, 
Yeah, we have the new shock mounts are on, so we had the machine shop make new new brackets for them that are on there. So there's a big a big mount there that holds the shock on, um, and then we brought the suspension height down. We made new leveling arm in there. We got the new leveling valve mounted, and uh, yeah, everything with the leveling valve there we made. We've got a little heim joint. Is it gonna focus on it? A little heim joint in there. Uh, that we have that's on an adjuster where we can actually adjust it up or down if we needed to. So we're going to have the right height situated here and then the shocks are uh, in the right height. The shocks are in the middle of the travel from up and down. So we should have a lot better handling on this bus and instead of it being jacked up an extra, you know, five inches higher than it should be, it should handle a lot better. But we're working on the, the front end here and figuring out why it's all out of whack. Here's that radius right on this side. So you can see the front is solid. There's no adjuster, it's just welded. And then the back end has an adjustment, but you'd have to actually disconnect the radius rod to be able to adjust it. Uh, we got all new brake hoses on here now. We want shorter hoses. The old ones uh, were being rubbed and uh, we're in the way. And then we're gonna hopefully get the front wheels back on this today. And uh, we'll see how it handles. But uh, yeah, again, we're still, still working on a few things with the, like I said, the caster was giving us crazy numbers seven seven degrees on one side and then three and a half on the other and three and a half is really about the limit um, that you're ever going to want to have that so don't understand what what's going on with the front end now here you can see this is a rubber brake hose where it had been rubbing on the tire through a couple layers of it uh, eventually it was going to let go but uh, yeah, they had two long brake hoses in there and in a position where they could rub the tires. Their both sides were like that. So we got that situation taken care of, shorter hoses and replaced them with new ones. So we knew that when we replaced the oil pan on here, we ordered the gasket from the serial number on the engine and we know that we have a different oil pan on here than what's supposed to be on here. And then that made us question a whole lot of things. One thing that we looked at when we were under there was the oil dipstick here. Uh, just that little curly tip that you see right there at the very end is all that sticks down below the oil pan gasket. Uh, so the dipstick is too short. We actually have 11 gallons of oil on this engine right now. And it's, I don't know if you can see, but it's just that little drip on the end is where it's registering on the dipstick. Uh, the low mark there, the L, that would be about one inch above, or maybe a half inch above the oil pan gasket. Uh, and then the full mark is a good two inches above the oil pan gasket, um, which is why he was leaking so much oil because he was trying to run it full and he knew something wasn't right. So the dipstick is way too short um, for this vehicle. So we can make an adjustment on that. Uh, we'll see if we can modify that tube over there. So the dipstick will go down in there a little further. We know we have 11 gallons of oil in it right now. Um, we know that it's the wrong oil pan. Part of the concern though is the oil pan is extra deep so the sump is high up on the oil pan so you're never going to get all the way down to the bottom on it uh, so we're slightly concerned about that too but we definitely don't want to run it. and if we if we run it uh somewhere near that low mark on there that's going to get us just above I, i'd prefer it to be like right at the oil pan gasket line that way when it's running it's sucked down just a little bit uh, it's going to stop from oil leaks and stuff so just lots of extra things that you got to figure out um, you know, is it done right? And, you know, trusting your dipstick is something you need to do, be able to do. Here, take okay. Placement air dryer. Look how pretty.
Okay, we're getting all the pumping fittings swapped around on here. how it was on there that was just tight on it huh. ah, this brand new snap-on torque wrench head the ratchet head is brand new that this I think it's probably the first vehicle I've used it on <laughs> if not I've used it one other time yeah. and it's scaring me to death the teeth have slipped in it already four or five times Look at the top of it. Let me see the top. Flip it over. No. I'm gonna go get a quarter inch fitting and air it up. Let me see it. What did I put? Uh, a female. So we went to air the bus up to pull it out of the shop and this airbag had totally fallen apart. The, there was no nuts on the bottom of it and the stud had come out of one side and it allowed it to get kind of cocked in there sideways and it, it took the seal of the airbag out so the airbag couldn't air up. So we had to take it all apart and we were able to reassemble it and the, the mount base plate for it was cracked so he took it to an aluminum welder and we had to weld it up, put new studs in it. Uh, and we were able to remount the airbag back on there. But what a fiasco, just trying to get out of the shop and an airbag just came apart because there was no bolts. Then we started looking around and we found other airbags missing bolts on them as well. So it helped us find those problems. We did tighten up some play in the steering gearbox here by adjusting that little screw in the middle there. You loosen up the outer nut and then you can turn the screw. That brings the worm gear in and out so you can tighten up the slack in there and that definitely helped a lot. There you go. Straighten it out. You got it. And straighten the wheel. Straighten it. There you go. Go back a little bit.
teman-teman We greased up the belt fitting on there, that uh, pulley. Put some grease on it, hopefully that'll take care of the squeaky noise. I mean, there's still a little bit of play, but I mean, we really haven't okay. tried Okay, go ahead and stop right here for me. Okay. Just to, we're just doing a brake check is all. <laughs> okay, we got good air pressure and everything. We're good to go. 110, 115. Okay, all right. Good. <coughs> Stay to the far side. <coughs> Stay way over this way. And he just dumped the gravel on here, so. to that Go straight here and you can get on it a little bit, feel the steering, get a little better speed. How's the handling feel? Good, actually, the steering feels. Should be tighter, tighter. so they tightened up that worm gear. Yeah. But no, I mean, it, it's not as sloppy. Yeah. Clean. Yeah. <laughs> Shouldn't have kicked up too much gravel there. No, I mean my hands are oh. real at all. Oh yeah. Inside here. I'm trying not to touch anything. No, I mean I've been doing that. I've been touching everything. Right so let's go ahead and stop right here. Okay. This is different. <laughs> In a good way? Or a bad way? Well, I guess this is, you know, this is now it's about the same. Okay. Because it was angled this way, and usually it's angled this way. The way it is now. So I just... Oh, you're talking about the position the of angles, the wheel? Yeah, the angle of the wheel. Okay, you're going to need to slow down and get on your half of the road. Yep. <laughs> No shoulders here. No I'm kidding. <laughs> okay, now you can take your middle half of the road. <laughs> Where is your oh you have a foot thing here that folds down? Uh, yeah, there's a there? air valve on the side. Okay. Oh, That's alright. That's right here. Thank you. Yeah. Oh my god. Sorry. I just felt like I was gonna bite it. <laughs> <laughs> My feet dangling four feet off the ground. Yeah, that was one of the niceties you put in our tag. Okay. Break it up. 
brakes feel good? Yeah, we're 120 almost. How does the play in the wheel feel? It actually feels much less. Good. Because I would, there would be a slack spot in the middle. Yep. That was about three inches. Now it seems to be responsive. Responsive. And the, hook, the steering wheel is horizontal. Usually it's up, it was always up here. Okay. So yeah, it's much straighter. Not, not yeah. quite all the way straight. Well, I mean, yeah. I've been used to driving at 45 degrees. smooth ride up here right now too it, so it, so you actually this, have this is kind of where it's actually better <laughs> now this little bump i don't know i didn't even need to notice it nothing and that's even yeah. less well you had no shocks or your shocks were maxed out so they're yeah. i mean i would i would know i went over that yeah but these are not too bad did you get up oh, not even there yeah you want to slow down yeah. here That still feel a little top heavy. I, I can feel oh, it. The, it has. That, I mean, that's always to but, me. That's always been that way. And I think I don't think there's anything you can do about it. No. Because they changed the center of gravity so yep. much. But if it, if we can get it calmed down going over rough spots, and the steering I really feels much better than it did already. That's huge. So we're going to go around the square? Or gonna yeah. Handling is well improved. Yes, very, very much. About that rear end noise that you were hearing, is that gone? I can't quite tell you. Because I don't hear anything back here. I can hear the engine, but I don't yeah. hear the howl that I usually. But yeah. I would hear the howl at 50, 55, okay. for sure. I don't remember hearing it just a minute ago. No, I didn't hear it then. That rock comes out too, don't it? Yeah. Your wife's going to be happy that it got out of the shop, right? Yes. <laughs> and then I'm going to be heading home. <laughs> trees back. Stay in the middle of the drive, but then when you get to the very top, stay to the left. <laughs> After the turn. Yep. I got me. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You dumped the toolbox on me. Yep, sure <laughs> did. Stay far to the left. This up here surprised me. When it came up. <laughs> uh, there's some on the doors. Yes. Okay. Actually, park a little bit more to the doors on the right, because then when oh. we back out, you can just swing it. Okay. One swing, or if we have to go back in the shop, then we'll uh, back up and make the approach. Well, he recently had this at a shop and he paid big money to have him replace a pinion seal. Unfortunately, though, we noticed uh, they never checked the rear end gear oil level after replacing the pinion seal because it was almost three gallons low on gear oil, which is crazy amount. 
So we drained everything, filled it with new uh, gear oil, put a synthetic in there. Hopefully that's going to help it out. Um, also the tire shop, they put new tires on it. He didn't have the rear tires balanced, which you normally don't balance rear tires uh, or throw balance beads in them or something like that. But he didn't have them balanced, but they went ahead and left all the old balance weights on the new wheels they put on there. So that made them extremely out of balance. So it was really just a bad vibration in the back end from these tires not being you know, balanced correctly. So we pulled all those old balance weights off and now it rides much smoother in the back. Thank goodness. Parked here for about a half hour now. There's no oil leaks under there, no drips at all that I see. Has a shadow in the middle there. The trailer hitch, but yeah. So we're gonna pressure wash the back of this off so we take it for a test drive on the highway. We'll see if there's any oil leaks. The thing's leaking oil real bad when it got here. Looks like we got that all fixed up. All right, we got that initial little test drive done. He's gonna go take it on a large test drive today. It's gonna be about uh, 50 miles on the highway. And just gonna get some feedback from him how it handles on the highway and how much things are improved. And, um, you know, local test here, you know, going 50 miles an hour isn't the same. So he couldn't drive it controllably before over like 60, 65 ever. And it was, he felt out of control the whole time at those kinds of speeds. So we'll see what he can do today on the interstate. <laughs> We got the handling on this thing is just so much better than it ever was, and I I was afraid going over 60 to 65. It was shaking and it was really hard to control, and I had this thing up to like 70 and 74, 75 on the freeway, and going over bridge aprons and stuff would really drive me nuts, and over rough roads would just make it really tough. And it handles like a dream now. That's awesome to hear. Yep. So yeah, we got one, we got a hydraulic line on the transmission still leaking, but it looks like the oil leak is gone. I don't see anything wet down there on that. No, the bottom of the pan looks dry. That looks under there. really good. So yeah, we're making big, big progress on that too. And the suspension, you said it handles really nice. Now it feels good. Yes. It's like a luxury ride. <laughs> <laughs> and before it was not. And, and I was stressed. And the steering is so much tighter now too, right? Y yes, significantly. <laughs> and I think because before we were at the top and that that arm that keeps it the axle centered yep we were pushing that all the time and that's i think would start the wagon oh and now that seems to be down and it's you know it just glides along nice 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 it is nice so very very pleased <laughs> the holler through the trees and from a mile away you can hear them play as they climb that hill with ease but at the top of that mountain there's a new life waiting for those who can make the run if they can make it to the top sky will put them in the shop till their new life has begun Where the buses come to run Bus Grease Mountain We're gonna get that big job done 